Brian Nosek and Matt Modell were fascinated by political ideology. Specifically, they wondered whether how we physically see the world affects how we politically see the world. Being scientists, they set up an experiment to test this. Participants from the political left, right, and center completed a perceptual judgment task in which words were presented in different shades of gray. Participants had to click along a gradient representing grays from near black to near white to select a shade that matched the shade of the word. They measured accuracy. How close to the actual color did participants get? The results were stunning. Moderates perceived the shades of gray more accurately than extremists on the left and right. Their conclusion? Political extremists perceive the world in black and white figuratively and literally, which is sort of incredible. And they quickly started shopping around different social science journals to publish this incredible finding that really, deep down, most of us suspect is probably true. As for our intrepid authors, they both got to enjoy watching the paper become well-cited, they made it into a TED Talk, and they often give speeches to enthralled crowds about how we all need to look a little more at the gray in life. Wait, that last part isn't true. That's not exactly what happened. Instead, our authors had recently been reading about how false positive findings were running rampant through the sciences. So they decided to try to replicate their findings before actually publishing it. And much to their dismay, when they ran the experiment again, the finding vanished. It was a fluke. Brian and Matt said their first reaction was, why did we do the replication? We ruined a good finding. It would have for sure made the news, it would have gotten a ton of citations, and best yet, you can practically see the pop sci Malcolm Gladwell book writing itself. Shades of Grey, how the way you view the world affects your worldview. I mean, come on. You can practically taste the book tour, the TED talk, the speaking gigs. But one replication took that all away. If this was an Aesop fable, the moral of this story would be kind of depressing. Never try to replicate your work, you may ruin a career-defining result. Thankfully, Brian and Matt didn't accept that. They said, this is antithetical to good science, and if our job is incentivizing bad behavior, let's try to change those incentives. Brian Nosek would go on to co-found the Center for Open Science, and I spoke with him about all the ways they're changing science for the better and working so that scientists do not feel punished for doing the right thing. You can find that interview on my second channel. Matt is an early adopter of those changes, supporting open science and open data. But things are far from perfect. Many scientists still feel incredible pressure to find sensational results regardless if they're true or not. We need to continue to push funding agencies and publishers to stop incentivizing these wild results and instead incentivize scientists to get a shade closer to the truth.